So I was reading this uh, reading on law in a labor surplus economy, chapter six of the Thangar Roy and uh, A Swami. So I've just made this diagram for you. So what is a labor surplus economy? Labor surplus economy is that you have more workers than you have jobs in the economy. If you have more workers than jobs in the economy, it means that uh, there is more labor and there is a problem to place this labor properly in different jobs. And when you talk about, and this is the case, when the main idea is that you have to place these workers in the proper jobs, employment generation becomes a very important developmental issue for all governments. I mean, they can't just run away from it, that uh, uh, they will have to put this in their political agenda. Ke yes, they are willing to put this forth. Ke, huh? Develop I mean, employment generation is one of the main developmental priority. Ours is a democracy. And the meaning of democracy itself means that there is an accountability. There is an accountability. Right. That accountability comes from, I mean, and in this particular case, the accountability government has shown in terms of passing out the act such as Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. Right. So there is a guarantee act. It is a justiciable act. You can go in the court of law in case if the government is not able to, to give what it has promised in this particular act. So that is the way accountability is shown by the government here in a democracy. Now the thing is that how Indian legal system has evolved to gradually expand the labor rights which you have. So that is the question which we are going to answer that how Indian legal system has gradually evolved to expand the labor rights. We will look at Initially, they had just relief. We will provide some relief to the labor. It was expanded to form a right. Then, there were coerced workers earlier, bonded labor earlier. Now, you have protected workers. Now, you have protected workers. Then, Earlier, it was just a policy. Yes, we have to provide employment. Now it is a legal entitlement. If you are not able to provide, people can, can go into the court of law. The people can go into the court of law. You look at the first one, from relief to right. So earlier, what used to happen? I mean, this was from feminine relief to right to employment. No. From feminine relief to right to employment within this particular point. We can say 6.1. From feminine relief to right to right to employment. Just see how far we have come. In colonial India, we started by giving some relief during feminine times to the workers. And then we have come to the point that, yes, employment is a right which individuals have. Mm -hmm. And then they say that before feminine relief, if you look at uh, how colonial uh, uh, government used to think, they always used to think in terms of the license fair. Right. So initially there was a license fair kind of policy. But then they realized this, that during the times, if they, during the time when, the, when there are femines, if they want people to work, they would also have to give some kind of feminine relief also. They just can't get over that. You can't just force workers to work at such low levels of wages without giving them any relief, that is not going to happen. So you can't just say, no, no, we are following the policy of lies is fair. We will not intervene. Let markets decide whatever they want to decide. That is not the case. So that is the first instance 
when the government has started thinking in terms of workers even though whatever less it was howsoever less it was but government has started thinking over that then professor amrita sen says that there is no femines in independent india and in a democracy why you have femines and you are out of the government people will start questioning you you have to have policy so that there are there is no femines so he's he's of that view it is the responsibility of the government that the that the that people should not face any femines and in case and in times of femines they should be given some kind of help right then <clears throat> public employment also sort of improved the workers bargaining power no when government has started giving so right to employment was there na government has started giving some kind of employment right to the people it has increased their bargaining power they can at least go to the court of law just see he is giving me the wages which is below the minimum wage <laughs> so workers bargaining power has increased so whatever employer whosoever is the employer he will have to give higher wages at least higher than the minimum wage why because there is a right to employment there is a right to employment in maharashtra also i mean uh, there was uh, this this right to employment when it was institu institutionalized right many workers uh, many female workers were there right so women also participated in work this was around 1977 as far as i remember right and it also encouraged political activism because these people now they can raise their voices they can't just sit quietly they, um, they are not expected to sit quietly they can raise their voices they can demand their rights when you have coerced workers earlier you have coerced workers you had bonded workers now you have protected workers so you have bonded labor now you are giving legal protections to organized labor you are giving legal protections to unorganized sector also but here the point was when the protection was given whatever legal what is going to be the legal protection government is given is going to give you this minimum wage government is employing you at this wage but there are problems in corruption right i mean this is basically about that maharashtra case only that uh, uh, So there was problem in implementation there were ghost workers there were no workers but their name was there so whatever amount government used to give i mean middlemen used to keep that in the pocket so there is a wage theft there is low productivity all of that all of that so when you give legal protection it came with various kinds of various kinds of uh, uh corruptions also and we moved from informal policy to formal legal entitlement so what is that formal legal entitlement the best example is uh, mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act <clears throat> so it's, it's a statutory commitment it is a statutory commitment it's a commitment so the government is going to give 100 days of work per household per rural household if not you can go to the court of law you can go to the court of law huh? even in non feminine years government raised these wages and if the wages in manrega they are going to be raised huh? it means that their bargaining power is increasing they can always tell their prospective employees we are getting this much in manrega you have to give more than that right you have to give more than that right so that is this also helped in raising their 
bargaining powers. Now, the another question which arises was that can government pay below minimum wage? Is that possible? Can government also act in such a way that we have to get our work done? We can, uh, we can pay you only this much. We're not even paying you minimum wage. Supreme Court said, no, this is not going to happen. Anything below minimum wage is a forced labor. So under Article uh, 23, this is not done. Right. So you can't get away with that. I think this was 1983 ruling. Um, I don't remember some, some Sanjit Roy or versus state of Rajasthan. Just have a look at that in the reading. Even when um, independent India, uh, even in, when, when uh, India got independent, we started with acting towards Framing such laws which are going to help in dispute resolution, for example, Industrial Disputes Act 1947. We started thinking on those lines. In thinking in those lines where some rights should be given to the workers. But the problem came after reforms. So many economists themselves, they started asking for, wait, try to rationalize these labor laws. You have said you can't fire people. I mean, you can't just uh, ask people to go. You have to, uh, you have to ask permission from the government. It becomes very difficult to work in such an environment. That is not ease of doing business. So we'll take our discussion further. But these are the broad uh, analysis of uh, several other pages of your reading. So you will have to read the reading, but you have to once you read it, uh, it will become clear. So you can just do some more fill in the blanks here. So I hope it was useful to you. Thank you, Vita.